Among Us, a children's video game that exploded in popularity during 2020 and is now embraced as the most popular mobile game on the planet, has a very serious problem. Amassing 41 million downloads in the United States alone and over 250 million downloads worldwide, Among Us is probably a name that most of us have heard a number of separate times. Popular memes, influencer collaborations, all sorts of digital entertainment content, and more have catapulted this game into a global spotlight with incredible popularity and widespread appeal. It's a simple premise, really. Join the game and try to suss out the liars, or alternatively, if you are the imposter or one of the other villain types in the game, try to eliminate or trick your opponents into letting you live long enough to kill them all one by one. The game echoes popular social activities like Mafia or previous and similar titles like Town of Salem, but the literal gameplay itself isn't the only function at play here. Among Us, while offering an isolated environment with intended mechanics of deception and fun, also creates an anonymous digital environment for people to interact with one another. Not only that, but Among Us also provides a target-rich environment for predators. With a 7-plus age bracket enacted by the PEGI Video Game Ratings Board, a 10-plus from the ESRB, and a 9-plus rating on the Apple Play Store, Among Us is a game that widely appeals to and targets children. The most popular influencers in the world who play this game cater to children, and although it's relatively impossible to find any exact demographic metrics for the title online, various polls on Reddit and other social media suggest that there is an extremely large number of children who play, ages 10 to 18 in this game. This is where things get strange. Typical Among Us games feature around 10 to 15 players, with one, two, or three different imposters. This allows the group to carry out votes and engage in what the developers intended as a sort of standard experience. However, before we can actually play the game, we need to find a functional host lobby or assemble a group of friends. Here's the problem. Unless playing privately with an isolated group, you will need to join public games. Now, the developers have clearly taken steps to mitigate harmful behavior or chat activity. That much needs to be said, including age verification on startup for guest accounts. You can just lie and click an older age than you are. Or parental email notifications to approve text features if the account has selected an age below 18. But much of the experience relies on your ability to manipulate other players. And thus, it is highly desirable to unlock a complete chat functionality. With chat capabilities fully unlocked, you'll need to find and join a game. And that's where things go completely off the rails. Among Us has a very simplistic interface where you get a couple of toggle options and then games are displayed in list form with a pretty small number of choices. A lot of these games are fine, featuring a group of players who just want to have fun playing, but a sizable chunk of these initial game lobbies are disturbing. I was contacted by a source on Discord who made me aware of an existing sub-community in Among Us who use these game lobbies as a place to target children or engage in sexually explicit conversations with minors, and to my horror, it's absolutely true. To best explain how this goes, I need to describe the exact chain of events that took place. The way it was described to me, a significant number of game lobbies are created with a small number of maximum player slots, and the host, who has the ability to change names at any point in time, will create a suggestive title for the game which draws in potential victims or willing partners. These titles can include things like Horny Boy or Sending Nudes. These titles often feature coded language to avoid chat parameters, and at first I was getting banned from every single game I tried to join, because I had one of the randomly generated gamer tags that the algorithm assigns to guest accounts. Well, over time, seeing that these chat rooms absolutely do exist, and there is a pretty hefty number of them at any given point in time, I started to learn more about what was actually going on. For starters, there is a very large role-playing community in the Among Us game, who use keywords to advertise what type of game it will be. A lot of those keywords are based on anime shows, like My Hero Academia, and while these games can often derail into really strange behavior in-game, it's less of a problem than what I found next. Sorting out and understanding the keywords, Baku, Deku, Kiri, etc., I started to focus more on the smallest games, maximum of four players, which basically just completely destroys the functionality of the game itself, and investigate what was happening there. Once again, I kept getting banned, but not before seeing that there were usually two or three people in the room, often with explicit but coded name tags, or one of them didn't, but two of them did, or one of them did and two of them didn't, and a few times I even caught that there were social media profile exchanges taking place in that lobby. This is where I decided to develop a rudimentary script for myself and a methodology to investigate rather than just guessing all the time. I started to make my name into something juvenile and feminine. I picked a set of lines such as, Yeah, I have X social media, but my parents don't let me add people I don't know. I guess I can lie to them and say it's a friend from school. And I tried to craft a persona that would actually test what was going on in this sizable chunk of game lobbies. The results were disgusting. 
being extremely careful to never actually give out personal identifying information and also knowing that I would never actually add these people on Snapchat in particular or Instagram or text the numbers that they gave out. Yes, I got phone numbers from some of them. I set about seeing what exactly happens in these games. What I found was pretty simple yet horrifying and disgusting. After using my script and oscillating between names like Bitsy Girl or Becca or Tina13, just stuff like that, I had been given, always, every single time, unasked for, 14 Snapchat profiles, 6 Instagram accounts, and 2 phone numbers. These were being given from accounts with names like Horny Boy or Silly Map, Map being an acronym on Twitter in particular for Minor Attracted Person. And these were being given after I had given my age, I always said 13 or 14, and said, I'm not allowed to add people on social media, what's your tag? I'll lie to them and tell them it's a friend from school when they were asking for my profiles. Basically 22 times in total over the span of just a couple of hours, broken down into sessions, all this made me sick to my stomach, I was being sent social media accounts by people who thought I was 13 or 14 years old for sexual reasons. Some of the games I joined had more or less explicit conversations. Some of them would still ban me right away, but the reality was quickly beginning to take shape that there is a very serious problem in this game. Here's how it generally works. Someone would create a game with maximum four or seven players and name themselves Need Sexy GF or Boy Snap or Daddy Dom. There were a lot of them, a whole bunch of different ones. And then when you joined, they would quickly type out a message and ask how you were doing. They'd strike up a conversation. If you engaged with them and fired back something innocent, innocuous, or not out of the ordinary, they would flip the lobby to private or begin banning every single other person who joined and start pushing towards the idea of getting your Snapchat. Sometimes they would volunteer their own information, up to and including phone numbers, spontaneously. Other times they would get spooked and leave, but the game rooms were prevalent, right? There's tons of them, and there were always more to join after refreshing the list a couple of times. To hammer this home, sometimes I would get banned after walking in on a conversation with things like, well, I guess you count as an adult. Whether this was role play or an instance of actual grooming, it's hard to tell sometimes, but the frequency of all this was baffling. This is where I kind of started to get stuck. For Instagram, I could easily check the profile without actually adding them and investigate who these people were, but for Snapchat and phone numbers, it's not so easy. The Instagram accounts I was given were mostly private, actually, and I couldn't even find them, while being pushed to give my information instead of me adding them, but when I did find one, it was void of any real identifying information and had no actual pictures. These accounts, by and large, could have belonged to anyone and showed no evidence of being a 13 or 15 year old boy, which is what was sometimes fired back after they were told that they were talking to a 13 or 14 year old girl who would lie to her parents about them being a friend from school in order to talk to them more online with different social media profiles. Again, names that included things like HXRNI, circumventing chat rules on the word horny, or SXY, meaning sexy, with similar coded language, those were the names of the people that were engaging in this. The problem, as I see it, is that Among Us allows for a controlled but temporary chat space with extremely secure anonymity, where users can create targeted and accessible rooms, then close them off to chat with a potential victim alone. These rooms exist in the world's most popular mobile game, with a target-rich environment, mainly composed of children. And when you get banned, you can just make new accounts, or better yet, switch names between tries as you fish within a massive pool of targets. Obviously not every single person I talked with was a predator, however, when such a prominent subculture exists in a children's phone game, it will attract the wrong types. And when discussing this topic with a community member on Discord, he described it, rather poignantly I might add, as a purely digital form of Tinder for kids with a bunch of predators mixed in. That hit pretty hard, because a child, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, is just getting to the point where they are hyper susceptible to all this. They are also the main demographic target for Among Us, and they will be surfing a game that is infested with rooms designed purely to engage them in sexual conversation, and then try to move that conversation off-platform to other forms of social media. Preferably, it seems, ones with temporary picture sharing. Hopefully everyone can see the problem here. It also appears that this phenomenon peaks heavily in the late hours of night. After 10 or 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, the uptick in volume for games that exist only as a place to indiscriminately solicit nudes and explicit conversation from players absolutely explodes. In 2021, an article in the U.S. Sun described an American mother who said, quote, Someone very close to me was tricked into giving their phone number to a registered child predator on this game, and goes on to describe how conversations were lasting weeks at a time where the child believed this to be an innocent interaction. I am highly confident that if I were to pursue these interactions on Snapchat or Instagram or even through text message with the individuals who shared their profiles and their number with me, 
we would have weeks of conversation, them believing me to be a 13 or 14 year old girl, lying to her parents in order to talk to them, all the while having been first introduced to each other as they advertised themselves as horny map, aka horny minor attracted person on a children's game. Inner Sloth, the developers behind this title, have certainly implemented features to combat all this, and I'm honestly not really making this video to attack them, because what are they really supposed to do when the underground community engaging in this behavior is so strategically dedicated? But when a function of gameplay mechanics can be, and is being, exploited to prey on children in such a disgusting way, and it's rampant, by the way, parents should be aware of that. Among Us is not necessarily some innocent safe harbor of gaming where your child is able to goof off and relax without danger. It is infested with a group of people intent upon exiting the app for further explicit conversations who ignore the morality and ethical disaster of having preteen or early teenage girls lie to their parents to have those sexual conversations. And many of them are, well, let's just say there is no verifiable digital footprint for them based on what they gave me, and they do not appear to be 14 or 15 year old boys. I'm kind of at a loss on what to do here, now that I think about it. I don't have enough information on any of them individually to get this escalated in specific instances to law enforcement. I don't want to keep doing the digging, because it makes me sick to my stomach, and it feels horrible. But I also want to try and boost awareness on this topic, because I have not seen hardly anyone discussing what actually goes on here. For parents, be extremely careful of letting your children play this game. It's not as innocent as it may seem, because a subsection of the community is purposely using it as a hunting ground for explicit encounters. For kids, never give your social media profiles to anyone ever. Even if they seem cool, you do not know who they are and you do not know what they want. Bottom line, it was a disturbing realization that not only has Among Us become a worldwide trending phenomenon, it has also opened the door in terms of basic functionality for a pretty horrifying amount of predatory behavior. But yeah, that's it. If you want to support, there are links down below. Um, again, not really sure what to do about this other than warn parents. I guess that's the primary purpose of all of it. Uh, but yeah, the different ways to support down below. There's another YouTuber to check out, social media. You can support on Locals or Patreon in uh, more in particular because I'm trying to get away from AdSense as the primary method of funding for the channel. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff too, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Again, be super careful of games like that, especially Among Us, because once you know about that, you can't really go back to not knowing and it's really disturbing. But yeah, have a nice night.